It is Sunday, the 18th of October of 2020. It's the beginning of a new week, and I hope you're having a good day today. Uh, good morning, and welcome to the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I am your host, I am Kurt, and as I say, it is Sunday today. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're going to have, you know, set to have a good week. I wanted to talk this morning about the idea of a blog post that I put out there. It's called More on the Wane, and as you may have guessed if you've been at all paying attention to what I'm doing, it is more on the current COVID-19 crisis, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, and the responses that have been occurring with regard to that. I want to start by saying I think that one of the most ironic things that I've heard recently is the fact that the WHO, the World Health Organization, has now decided that uh, sheltering in place, that lockdowns, however you want to term that, are a bad idea. That's not a surprising thing to me. I've known this for some time. And uh, I'll just tell you, I'm waiting for people to decide that actually wearing masks are an equally bad idea, but I'm afraid that that's something that's going to take a little while. And to be quite frank with you, the fact that the WHO has said what it said about lockdowns being a bad idea merited momentary reporting in the mainstream press and not a whole lot more. Right. And what that means is that there are a bunch of people out there who are still saying you should be doing this, basically, and who won't take the advice of one of the bodies that they say should be listened to with regard to this, to the point that they're literally willing to censor people who are not willing to toe the party line with regard to what they say. That's, the, again, the World Health Organization. I don't know whether or not the CDC, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, have released similar guidance, but... Whether or not they have, to me, is pretty much beside the point, because in my mind, people should be, you know, at least if they're going to use something like the CDC or the uh, World Health Organization for what they're saying, they should probably be considering whether or not they should be locking things down. Here's my thing, right? The numbers have never been... I mean, you argue that the numbers are very high, and I, and I get it. Yes, a couple hundred thousand people have died from this disease over an eight-month period. That in itself, where it sounds really high, by comparison to other things that happen in life, really probably isn't. I don't know, but I suspect that if you look at cancer deaths during that same time frame, you would find that there were more cancer deaths substantially than there are deaths from COVID-19. And somebody's pointed something out, I think we're technically in flu season by this point, and we're not seeing really any flu season numbers at all. And you have to wonder what's going on there. Um, are we misreporting? I mean, what's happening, right? But, and as, as other people have pointed out, look, if the masks are keeping people from getting the flu, how is it that they're keeping people from getting the flu, but they do not appear uh, to be keeping people from getting COVID-19? One interesting thing that I saw recently said, basically, that the majority of people who, who got COVID-19 were regular mask wearers, wore them all the time, and that there was a very small percentage of people who did not wear masks that got COVID-19. Now, you can argue that people were saying what they were saying in order to keep from getting in trouble, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure that what they were responding to was, was anonymous. So the idea that they were doing that is kind of kind of silly. Why would they do that? If it's anonymous information, why would they do that? M my thing is this, my, and has been this for some time. For a very long time, a number of people have expressed grave concern over the things that are happening that are essentially collateral damage, if you will, from all of the things that are occurring with regard to COVID-19. They've talked about a uh, increases in suicide. They've talked about businesses going bankrupt and the owners being despondent and so forth as a result of that. Uh, they've talked about uh, uh, people, kids not going to school and therefore not getting education. They've talked about the fact that kids who aren't going to school, many of them are not logging into the programs that they're supposed to be using to do their schoolwork. Um, they've talked about, 
they haven't talked about to the to as great a degree as I would like them to. Things like the lack of social interaction for children, and I'm being the parent of a of a moderately autistic son. I recognize how so my son goes to school. My son goes to school at least uh, four and, and most of a fifth day a week. He goes to school. He wears a mask. I don't really care for that, but I'm not going to complain too badly because it means that the school is open and he can actually go. But the thing is, being moderately autistic, that need for social interaction is greater than you could possibly imagine. And it's not just for him about getting to see other people and it lifting his spirits and all things that it does for lots of kids. And this, the thing that I'm going to raise here is true for other kids as well as my son, but it's particularly true for my son, and that is he learns social behaviors and responses and things of that nature as a result of interacting with both children and teachers in his environment, and uh, you know, whoever else happens to be there. This is one of the ways that he learns how to interact, how to, how to, okay, so for my son, there, there's a problem, right? And the problem is that, that for a very long time, if you asked him a question, you always got the same answer. So, he uh, he he falls down and scrapes his knee. How are you, Garrett? I'm fine. Is he really fine? He's sitting there crying because he just scraped his knee. But he doesn't understand. Didn't understand that there were other ways to respond. Could did it wasn't in him that there were other ways to respond to that. I'm hurt. I hurt. Uh, my knee hurts. Right. He he didn't understand that. That wasn't in him. So he, he wouldn't be getting that. And there are so many more things like this. There's abuse that's occurring in lots of homes. And lots of times the abuse wouldn't have occurred in the first place because the kid wouldn't, or the uh, mom or whoever, you know, the various people wouldn't have been at home. They'd have been at work or whatever. And worse yet, it's not getting identified because the people who would normally be identifying that are people in schools or, or people at workplaces or whatever who see that person who's at work and go, hey, something's wrong here. Well, that's not happening because that person doesn't get out into the public. And so they continue to either be abused or worse yet, they die as a result of abuse. And nobody is doing is really able to do anything about it. And these <clears throat> are the things the sorts of things that, for me, make it so that the current activities with regard to COVID-19 are problematic. And if you think doing things like making it so people have to wear masks when they go to the local grocery store aren't a part of that, you need to be aware, when I go to the store, I fly fast and low through that store with that mask on because they basically bother me to the point where I have to leave, or, and I don't know if they would call police on me if I didn't, even though I maintain six-foot social distance as a rule to the point where I never get close to anybody, I still go fast and low through that store and get the absolute minimum that I have to get. I start with the list. I stick to the list. I never get another thing. And that means that they're losing revenue. They're losing revenue because I might have bought other things in that store had I had the chance to linger even for a very short period of time had I felt like I had the chance to linger without wearing that stupid mask. So if you think you're not losing anything by having people wear masks in your store, you're mistaken, I promise. And it may be just a few of us that are like that, so you may not be losing as much as I think, but I have a feeling that's not the case. So this is my total point on things at this point. Looking at the numbers, okay, again, in my state, less than 1,500 people dead for the entire period from February the 1st to the current day. Um... Uh, not a huge number of infections in my state, but even so, the point is most people will recover just fine. Uh, looking at how things are going in the nation, where the numbers are again dropping, though I expect there would be another peak if they were to have people just come back to normal because people would get out of the masks and so forth. So, yes, the masks are working some. Yes, the lockdowns are working some. But the point is there would be another peak. And then I would expect to see yet another drop, and I'm pretty sure we'd be done with things. And we and we have to protect those who are aged and those who are, who have uh, multiple comorbidities and so forth. But past that, I think for the most part, we just need to open things up, 
know that this spike is going to happen, deal with that fact as it comes, work to make sure that people survive as best we're able using various restorative things that we can do to make that happen. And I think we would find that the numbers would continue to drop over the course of time until such time as they were so negligible as to not really even be noticeable. They're already in the 2,500, uh, 2,900 to 3,000 range. Now, they'd probably go back up to six or 7,000, maybe more, maybe a little more, because the bi bigger, more dense areas would suddenly start, uh, start uh, uh, experiencing more cases, right? But in, in terms of death, the word down to those numbers, from like seven or seven or eight thousand uh, uh, a couple of months ago. Okay, I'm out of time, so I, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. But I, I'm quite sure you you understand what I'm saying by this point in time. Let's go ahead and start thinking about normalizing things as best we're able, making sure that we're protecting the appropriate people. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this now. You have a great day, and I hope your week is a good one. I hope things are going well for you, and we're coming into fall, so be ready for that fall weather to start coming wherever you happen to be if you're not already experiencing it. You have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching this video. Remember that you can like the video on YouTube and you can give me a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, of course, you can also subscribe to my channel on both YouTube and Rumble. The channel would be Kurt's Religion and Politics. Uh, if you want to see more of my content, you can go to various places. The first of those places would be my blog. That's blogs.kpschubert.com. Blogs.kpschubert.com. If you want to follow me on uh, Twitter, um, parlor or minds.com you can look for my handle i am at kp schubert that is at kp s-h-u-b-e-r-t uh, you can also see my facebook page that also is kurt's religion and politics uh, i have obviously a youtube and a rumble account uh, my page uh, my uh, channels on those accounts pages channels whatever you want to call them is kurt's religion and politics um, i have uh, also, uh, if you want to support me, a Patreon account. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thank you for looking at my stuff. Remember, you can subscribe. Remember, you can click notifications on the YouTube to make sure you're notified for, uh, for new content. Uh, again, thanks for coming to visit my channel. Thanks for watching this video, and you have a great day.